Hey, boys and girls, have you ever gotten that dreaded FMI 3720, SPN 3720, FMI 15? That means uh, your DPF filter is at end of life and you're about to spend some major bucks, upwards to $2,800 at the dealer to get that remanufactured DPF filter put it in your uh, Detroit One Box. Well, I'll show you how to do it at home and uh, a lot cheaper than that, so stay tuned. All right, so I have here uh, 2017 Western Starts, a DD15 with a uh, one box SCR unit. So I already taken off the um, side skirt and uh, the brackets and steps to get to the one box. So the next step, we're gonna remove the DOC temperature sensor, and then we're gonna remove the heat panel. Um, once I get that out, I'll show you the DPF filter and how to get them out so you can clean them. All right, we removed the front DPF filter. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Remove the front heat shield and uh, the V clamp up front and the belt in the back. Uh, so now we're getting to the back one. It's a little bit more tricky. I don't want to take the back heat shield off. It's kind of pain in the ass. You have to go behind the truck and uh, there's two screws. Uh, there's one screw right there. Let the camera focus on this. And um, yeah, that, that screw is fairly straightforward. That's a uh, uh, number 10 Torx uh, female socket, but there's another one really behind that exhaust pipe there. And then two more behind. So um, I think I should be able to loosen this up. I already got the, the V clamp here loosened up. So I just got to get the back one and then slide them together onto the DPF filter and roll it out. So that's the plan right now. Um, the front V clamp uses the um, 14 millimeter and the uh, rear is 15. So just keep that in mind. And my front DOC looks great. Here's a look at the DPF filter that I extracted. So we're gonna clean it out once I get the second one out, but it looks good. There's no cracks, it's in serviceable condition. All right, we got the DPF filters out. Inspected the DOCs, DOCs look good. A few things to note, uh, the brackets. So the front V bracket that takes a 14 millimeter wrench or socket. I did sockets on this side and then the back bracket is a 15 millimeter. On this one, I used a box wrench on both sides. And then uh, the heat shield, the rear one, we loosened up all the bolts and the one that's behind, so you had to get behind the uh, one box and loosen them up, and you can kind of raise it, and it gives you enough room to pull it out. But basically, they're out, so we uh, to the next stage, we're gonna clean them out. Here's what they look like. So this is the inlet side of the DPF filter. Obviously, it's got ash, and uh, we're gonna get it all cleaned up now. Right, go ahead. There it comes. A little bit closer. There it goes. There's a DPF port. Right? Don't get too close, you'll damage it, but there you go. Start from the top coming out. Watch all the ass. You see? All these passages open up and carbon gets blown out. Work the corners everywhere evenly. Don't get too close. This is, ladies and gentlemen, why dealers charge you $2,800 to do this shit. They basically put it in the machine and it does the same thing. And we keep going like this. We alternate between pressure washer 
and then we use compressed air to blow it out until we see clear water coming out nothing but clear water once the clear water starts coming out and that's it you know you're done you just dry it one more time and uh, I what I do is I put it in the regular oven for 400 degrees for a couple hours just to dry it out so it's completely dry when I'm uh, ready to put them in and that's it you got brand new basically remanufactured DPF filter at the cost of pressure washer in some time see now we're blowing that shit out with a pressure just regular about 60 psi air gun once we get all the water out we're going to repeat with a pressure washer again about three four times until you start seeing only clean water and that's it you can stop at that point go so move lower a little bit this water yeah see it's got still collar to it there's ash basically being washed out all right we're ready to put the cans back in as you can see well, it's this next day already we washed them several times blown them out of compressed air and then just let them dry uh, overnight you can also put them in the oven actually uh, about 350 degrees for an hour heats it up and gets rid of all the water residual that's left in there after compressed air blowout before we put it in we're gonna take a wire brush and just scrub off the old seal uh, on the rim on the inlet side and the outlet there also you need to take pictures of the serial numbers on each can that's going to be very important later once we um, have it hooked up and we have to run adaptation routine on the computer to let the ecm know that we have uh, new filters basically All right, well, before we put it in, let's talk about what you need to buy, actually. Uh, you're going to need a full clamp and gasket kit and uh, clip-on nuts and bolts. Uh, those are brushed out. Now, I went up to the dealer because I simply do not want to wait for eBay to ship. And this is what it cost me, $625. Here are the part numbers. But um, I've seen this kit sold on eBay for around $285, $265. But unfortunately, in my case, I did not want to wait 10 days for it to ship. I'll lose a lot more money just sitting at home, not pulling freight. So went up to the dealership, and they had it in stock as common items. Um, they cannot be reused. So once you take your DPF off, there are seals on the back. They're all consumable. So... Every time you take it off, you have to buy this. Small price to pay compared to almost $3,000 for a dealer to do it. All right, we got the first the DPF in. That's the hardest one. Just basically use a pry bar and just carefully align it without crushing a gasket in there. And tighten the first V-clamp just a little bit so it grabs. And then get this one shimmied over. Uh, before I put the DPF filter in, I take the rear clamp all the way out and take the front one, I take the top knot off completely, undo the clamp and kind of put it on, on this area of the DPF filter and then I roll it in past the first the DOC and then you slide it over. But that's the rear one is the hardest, that's the one you will uh, fight a little bit. Everything else is downhill from there. Alright, we got the DPFs all in, everything's tight. I've temporarily put the DOC temperature sensor on here, so I'm going to run it without the heat shield and inspect for any gas leaks. So once I'm confirmed that everything's good, everything's seated well, um, we're going to close it up. The next step, we're going to go in and uh, program the computer to tell it that we have a new DPF filters. Oh, by the way, uh, when replacing these sensors, um, I suggest strongly recommend using the anti-seize compound that's about four dollar tube you can get a napa uh, it's the same stuff that you put on spark plugs or anything to, to prevent um, 
from sticking to metal because it'll basically weld itself shut and now you won't be able to service this again. Um, this goes for any sensor input. Uh, anytime you pull it out, always um, when you're replacing the thread, uh, put some anti-seize on it. You won't have trouble getting it out next time. All right, so this is the part where you need the fancy dealer software to get the goal accomplished. So basically what we're doing is uh, doing what's known as DPF adaptation. So this we got the Detroit Diesel Diagnostic Link uh, version 808. We go to actions after treatment. And uh, right here there's a ash accumulator, DPF ash accumulator. And right, we select the option cleaned or remanufactured installation. And then this is where two serial numbers that you hopefully took a picture of and wrote down on your sticky note. You enter that and you set the ash volume. And basically what it does, um, the ash accumulator goes back to zero and everything is golden. Basically the, the engine thinks you have brand new filter. You have another two, three hundred thousand miles before you have to do this. So let me go ahead and do that and then um, we're going to run uh, DPF regen just to see where we stand on the flow rate and the pressures. Up success. Here we go. So now we can close that and let's go take a look at our dash and the code is gone. So that's basically what dealer does boys and girls. See no code. We got clean DPF. We're good to go. So we're going to start the engine now and go check it out. Let the air build up. I'm going to bump RPMs a little bit. So as you can see with the uh, DPF instrumentation, our DOC inlet pressure is ideal. It's almost uh, almost brand new situation here. DPF outlet pressure, perfect. So at the idle speed. Uh, outlet temperature, everything looks good. Uh, we're gonna start the regen and then we'll keep monitoring this. All right, running pork regen right now. So that's gonna be about 40 minutes or so. We'll see how it works out. The OC looks ideal. So that's the inlet pressure, and uh, that's almost brand new parameter right there. Outlet pressure that looks good. Barbecue some on this shit right now. It's hot. 